In today's video, we are talking about how the narcissist grooms a target, meaning how they slowly condition a target to believe certain things and to tolerate certain things. It's a very slow process, so many of us don't even realize it's happening. And although the process might be slow, it's a powerful tactic that they use with the intention of gaining power and control over the target's perceptions, beliefs, and life. So if you have ever wondered why narcissists are so successful at getting a target into a relationship which eventually becomes abusive, yet the victim doesn't leave, today's video will shed some light on how this happens. But first, if you're new to my channel, I'd like to take a moment and welcome you and invite you to please subscribe and be sure and hit that notification bell because I put out new videos every week. Also, if you are interested in private one-on-one -on -one narcissistic abuse recovery coaching with me, please visit my website. It's linked in the description below. So today we're talking about the narcissist grooming techniques that they will utilize to gain power and control over a target's life. First, it's important to understand that the narcissist presents himself or herself to the target wearing a mask, not a literal mask, but a mask that disguises his or her true self. It's a false and phony persona, essentially, and it's usually in no way authentic or in alignment with their real and true self. They realize that they can utilize this fake and phony persona to influence and charm other people much, much easier than if they were to present themselves as they truly are. And to a very large degree, they themselves buy into this belief that the false persona they have developed is actually who they truly are. However, eventually it will become painfully obvious to everyone involved, including the narcissist, that they are not who they are portraying themselves to be. So now let's get into the specific tactics narcissists use to groom and condition their targets. The first thing that they will do is love bomb the target and mirror the target. So they will shower the victim with all kinds of flattery and attention. They will usually combine this with something called mirroring, where they mirror the exact things you yourself are passionate about or really enjoy or respect. And because of this, we think we have met our soulmate. Some might say, well, how naive of the victim to actually believe someone who, manipul who is manipulating them in this manner. However, you must remember the majority of people the narcissist targets are empaths. And empaths generally are guilty of projecting how they think and feel onto the rest of the world. These are people who would never dream of doing something this devious, this mean-spirited and manipulative to another human being under any circumstances. So usually the victim in this scenario has no clue what is actually happening because doing anything remotely close to this is so far from who they are. So they are not aware that people in their lives could actually be capable of doing something like this to them. And of course, sooner rather than later, this targeted empath is in for a very rude awakening and will realize they are now living in their worst nightmare. Next, during the love bombing phase, the narcissist will do something I call data mining. And this is where they are digging for any and all information that they can gain about the target to use to their advantage. So they are going to be trying to obtain information that they can use to mirror to the target. And they will also be mining for information about the target that they can use against them at a later date. And if and when they are caught doing something horrible or when they need to threaten the target to regain control of the situation and the relationship. Another tactic that they will use during this honeymoon and love bombing phase of the relationship is that they will work very hard at faking empathy to the target. 
Very high spectrum narcissists do not experience feelings of empathy. However, they are acutely aware of this fact and they know that showing empathy is an important part of their disguise and their false self they are presenting to this target at this time. And it's incredibly effective because it makes the target believe they have met another caring and compassionate person. Again, it's more evidence to the target that they have met their soulmate. When the reality is, the empathy the narcissist is displaying is nothing more than an act. It's completely made up and lacks any authenticity. Next, they will use something called future faking. Future faking is when the narcissist presents an image of this amazing future the target and the narcissist will build together. They will use the information that they have gathered during their data mining to present this dream life that is exactly what the target wants for his or her life. However, it's all complete and total BS. They have no intentions of building this dream life future with you. They are solely presenting this fake future to the target as a grooming technique and to get the target under their spell. And unfortunately, this technique is incredibly successful at accomplishing the narcissist's goal. The target has no clue that they are being lied to and manipulated at this stage of the game. Next, the narcissist will eventually start to love bomb the target less and less and will begin to break up the love bombing with devalue cycles. We call this intermittent reinforcement, meaning sometimes the narcissist will be loving, caring, and compassionate then there will be cycles where the narcissist will be cruel, abusive, neglectful, and mean. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the beginning of the trauma bond. This is exactly how they establish and grow the trauma bond between the two of you. So when the target is in a love bombing cycle, their body and brain will give them a huge dopamine spike. And when the devalue cycle comes, their body and brain will release the stress hormone cortisol. And this will indeed establish an addiction in the target to their abuser. This will also contribute to the target developing crippling levels of cognitive dissonance or confusion about who the abusive person truly is. Is he or she the good person I fell in love with? Or are they the abusive person that I see every so often? That cognitive dissonance is the glue that keeps the trauma bond together and is a debilitating factor from being exposed to this form of abuse that will have to be addressed when leaving this relationship. Next, the narcissist will start to utilize more abusive grooming techniques as the relationship progresses. And the narcissist lies are beginning to be exposed to the target and the target is becoming somewhat concerned about what's actually happening in their life versus this future faking dream life that they were promised. So now the narcissist will move into utilizing guilt trips to confuse the target and will utilize blame shifting to manipulate the target into believing the problems they are now having aren't the narcissist's fault, but are actually the target's fault. And unfortunately, usually at this point, the target still does not have any clue who and what they are dealing with. And because they could not imagine gaslighting another person in this manner, most times the target will accept the responsibility for the problems and where the relationship is versus where they thought it would be. This is a critical moment in the grooming process. And from this point forward, the narcissist will begin to blame the target for all the chaos and destruction the narcissist is actually responsible for. Another grooming technique that the narcissist will use on the target to condition them to believe things that are not true is the narcissist will play the victim with regard to their irresponsible, chaotic, and abusive behavior. They will blame their behavior on their childhood or on their school years or on their boss or on their finances or on their friends or 
on the actual victim, you. And they are incredibly convincing at getting people to actually believe they are indeed some kind of a victim. And at this point, the trauma bond is well on its way to uh, being established. The victim is usually emotionally, physically, and financially invested in this relationship at this point. And although the target may find this victim excuse suspect, more times than not, they will go along with this narrative because they are in complete and total denial about the reality of the situation they have now found themselves in. Next, around this time, the narcissist will make significant efforts to completely isolate the target from anyone in her, his or her family or friends that might be catching on to what's really going on. And they will use all kinds of shady manipulation tactics to triangulate the target against these people that actually genuinely care about the target. They will tell them that these people can't be trusted. They don't have their best interests in mind, uh, that they are liars, all kinds of horrible things to get the target to reject anyone who might get them to critically think about this relationship. The narcissist will want to completely eliminate them from the target's life. And this, of course, is incredibly dangerous to the target because now they are only getting their understanding of reality from the narcissist and their flying monkeys. Remember, the name of the game is to gain complete control over the target's life. Now the grooming and conditioning techniques the narcissist utilizes become flat out abuse uh, and they begin to utilize threats and emotional blackmail to keep the victim in line with what they want. So they will threaten the victim if he or she leaves, what they will do, how they will leave them penniless and alone, how they will take the children and they won't ever see them again, or how they will smear them to everyone they know. They will also utilize any information that the target has told the narcissist in confidence and will blackmail them with this information. At this stage of the game, the narcissist is usually in complete control of the situation and the relationship and the victim is scared to death and doesn't know what to do. And because that many, because of that, many victims decide to stay with the narcissist. And unfortunately, the abuse will only get more frequent and more intense as the years go by. And every once in a while, the narcissist will be kind and loving to the victim, giving them false hope that if they just try harder, if they just do better, they can have this nice and loving version of the narcissist all the time. However, the nice and loving version of the narcissist that comes out from time to time is nothing more than a manipulation tactic to keep the victim confused and consumed with trying to keep the narcissist happy at all times. All right, that's going to do it for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Also, follow me on my other social media platforms. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching, everyone.